like just to reread the psalm that was read earlier. You could turn in your Bibles to Psalms 63, 63, 1 to 8. This reads thus, O God, thou art my God. Early I will seek thee, my soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Can somebody give him a praise this morning? Thus I will bless thee while I live. You can't do it when you're dead. Can somebody just bless the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Glory be to God. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Oh, hallelujah. And it's one thing to praise God, but it's another thing to praise Him with joyful lips. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because Thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. What a good place to be. What a good place of refuge. What a good rejoicing point. In the shadow of thy wings I will rejoice. David had this quest in his soul. And in verse 8 and finally said, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. May I say to you who know the Lord this morning that you cannot fall. <laughs> Do you believe that this morning? No matter what the enemy might try, you need to have the confidence to know that he is able to hold you up. Yes. Amen. 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 Thy right hand uphold it. Thank you, Jesus. Well, oh, I just feel we need to pray this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, I bless your name this morning. I lift you up. I give you the praise and I give you the glory in your sanctuary, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name this morning, oh Lord. Thank you for your right hand of righteousness, your hand that upholded us. In our times of difficulty, whatever situations, uh, we as your children might face this morning, we thank you for that assurance. Thank you for your undergirding hands. God, I lift up this congregation before you this morning. You are our God. Oh, God. You are my God this morning. You are the God of your people this morning. Oh, God. Father God, I lift up every need in this congregation this morning. 
I lift up every soul that came through those doors this morning, Lord. You see the condition that your people came in here in this morning, Lord. Oh God, many came in with wounded and broken spirits. Oh God, heavy hearts this morning, but thank God they are here, they are here. They are made into your house, they are made it in your presence. You know, oh God, this morning I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh God, that you would minister to every heart. You would minister to every soul. You would bring healing and deliverance this morning as the word is being ministered, Lord, to the various needs and situations. Lord, may your people know this morning that you are there. You are there and that you are God and that is mindful. You are God that is concerned about us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And with you on our side, oh God, we can make it, we can make it, we can make it. We can make it, we can make it. We are more than conquerors for you that love us this morning. May you strengthen and may you sustain. May your Holy Spirit just take charge this morning. Take charge of this place. Take charge of this place this morning. Take charge of this atmosphere here this morning. In the name of Jesus. Break through this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, Spirit of the living God. 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 Oh God, fall fresh, fall fresh in this place this morning to the praise and to the glory of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We bless you and we lift you up. And we give you glory and we give you honor. For we know you does all things well. And there is nothing too hard for you to do. Can we give him a praise? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Growing your heart after God. Have you ever really gone hard after something in your life? Was there ever something you wanted in life or most more than life itself? It could have been a new job, a promotion, a spot on the cricket team, a guy you really wanted to date, a car you always wanted, a contract that could make or break your company, a weight loss goal. May I ask you this morning, what did you do to get what you wanted? And I'm sure all of us, at some point or the other, had some kind of craving or desire to get something. And we put all our energies behind it. Focus all our energies on it. We think about it night and day. Because you wanted it. When you want something, you go after it. Is that right? Yes. And in doing so, you devise a plan or strategy to get it. Perhaps you talked about it to anyone who would listen. And when people want things bad enough, they talked about it. We all have these kinds of pursuits in life. They are what we live for. They make life worthwhile. They provide drive and give us a sense of purpose and accomplishment. What would happen this morning if we as a church would give that same kind of effort to going hard after God. What would happen to us as individuals, as a church, if we made this all out effort to pursue God until we really 
found him. What kinds of change such a pursuit will make in our lives, in our prayer life, in our priorities, in our use of time, in our spending habits, in our social life, in our church attendance, in our burden for the loss, in our mission commitments. I can't help but believe this morning it will literally turn our lives around. It will turn a church around. It will turn our community upside down. If we had the same kind of pursuit, just like we pursue the things of life, if we would pursue God in the same manner, what a change would happen around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you going hard after God this morning? We have been enjoying the blessing and the presence of God in our services. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. I don't know if you have, but I have. Amen. Enjoying God's presence, God's favor and God's blessings in our services. Amen. And we know that He is with us. Amen. Amen. Do I have a witness in this place? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We've been enjoying the blessings and presence of God. God has met us in a powerful way. Nevertheless, I can't help but feel in my heart and in my soul that there is still something more. Do you feel, in spite of the fact that He has been with us and He has blessed us and is blessing us, that there is still something more that God wants to do for us? Amen. Hallelujah. I feel in my heart and in my spirit this morning that there is something deeper. God wants to take us deeper. There is something higher. There is something longer that God has for us as a church. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Father, I bless you today. Hallelujah. I'm not sure this morning if I could define it any more specifically than that. I just know in my spirit that it's out there. God wants to do something and I want it. I want it. Do you know we, we sing this song in church, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. You remember that? But you know the time has come when we not only sing, but our, our singing should become a reality in our life and in our souls and our press for God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I can't define to you in all the thumbs that you would understand, but I know in my spirit that God is about to do something. Amen. And I want to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember my topic this morning is going hard after God. What does it mean to go hard after God? In Psalms 63, we find an explanation of what it means to go hard after God. Along with an instructional, instructional manual on how to go about it. David sets forth three requirements or conditions that can be summed up in three words. One, reference. 
Can we say reference? reference. And that is know where we are. Know where we are. And number two, the second word is resource. See God as our own home. And number three, resolution. Set our hearts to see God. If you look in your Bibles, you will notice that the superscription at the beginning of the psalm tells us the setting in which David wrote the psalm. He was in the desert of Judah. David knew all too well where he was in a desert place, a wilderness. In verse 1, he describes it as a dry and weary land, a parched and thirsty land where there is no water. Amen. No water was there. He recognized where he was. The thing is that we need to know where we are. Each and every one of us this morning need to know where we are spiritually. Amen. 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 And it doesn't make any sense to fool ourselves and go through the motions. We need to know exactly where we are. David pointed out he knew that he was in a desert in a tribe and trust the land. And he knew also that there was no water there. Do you know where you are this morning? Do you know where you are this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. So we looked at our reference this morning. Going hard after God often begins with an accurate point of reference. Until we recognize it's just how dry and weary of soul we really are. We will never take steps to correct the situation. We need to know and if you don't understand where you are spiritually this morning, you will never do anything to correct it. But you've got to understand where you stand with God. It's time that we understand that, you know, it, it's more than just coming to church. This is about having a personal and intimate relationship with God. Some folks are just going through the motions. Through the motions. But they know that nothing at all is happening in their lives. You need to know and you need to be conscious of that. It's only when you feel that desperation in your soul and in your spirit will you do something about it. But if you don't feel that, nothing moving on the inside, nothing telling you that you want to try and trust the land, you will never do anything about it. But when you feel and when you know that where I'm standing is not the place where I ought to be, you will make steps to correct it. One thing you can say for David is that he was not troubled with mirages. He did not look out across the arid landscape mistakenly and seen an oasis with a shimmering pool of water and swaying palm trees. David was not in Fantasy Island. Some people are living in Fantasy Island. He realized he was in a desert place. Amen. And he was not going to mistake in this. He realized that he was stuck in a place with a pool of shimmering water and palm trees swaying with the breeze. That is because he was not living in a state of denial. You know, in our spiritual lives, we can live 
You know when you're in a state of denial, you are coming face to face with the facts and the reality of life and the situations that are around you. We need to wake up and understand that there is business what the situation is. Yes, yes, yes. You can call it what you want, but this is the reality of the situation and we must understand our situation. Yes, yes, yes. Don't fool yourself. the situation for what it was. Some people like to downplay things. They downplay till they even downplay their spiritual life and their spiritual relationship with God. Amen. But listen to me. We can't afford to downplay it. We need to understand having a name on a church book doesn't mean much. Amen. Oh, some people want the name on the church book because they think it would guarantee them a place in the cemetery. But listen, your name don't have to be there to get a place in the cemetery. You will get a place. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 Or just to be identified with a church. But my friends, it's more than being identified with a church. It's, it's about being identified with Jesus Christ, who is the head. And who is the savior of the body? Do you know him this morning? If you know him, can you give him a praise? Give him glory in the house this morning. I tell you, God is about to do something. And I don't want to fool myself. I don't want to work up no spirituality. I want the real thing. Amen. Amen. 
you know you need to know. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. We can't afford to accept as fact things that are just a figment of our imagination. Amen. We can't afford to see things that just aren't there. Amen. We can't afford to believe things about ourselves that just isn't there. Amen. Oh, God have mercy. And you start to believe things that are not there. Amen. You are having a problem. You see, the thing is before you, and you've got to know it for what it is. Hallelujah. And don't claim what you don't have. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Amen. 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 Glory to God. If you are not saved, you are not saved. Amen. Can somebody give him a praise? Amen. You know, it's like the church. That Lord Decia described by Jesus in Revelation 3.7. Hear what he said. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and a priest of goods, and have need of nothing. And know it's not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Maybe sometimes we as a church contribute to that false perception. Because God's presence is in our services. And because people can freely enter into praise and worship, they may assume that everything is just fine. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Everybody come in and join in praise and worship. So one big happy family. Isn't it right? Yeah. But my friends know, no, you need to have an experience with God. Yeah. You need to have an experience with God. Yeah. And sometimes as a church, we take it for granted because everybody falls in line and everybody worshiping yeah. and everybody is saved. But it's not so, my friends. We need to know. Yeah. We need to know. Yeah. Oh God, it's time, it's time that we let the Holy Spirit call us to account so that we can be reminded of just how dry and weary and pitiful and threadbare we really are. Let us look around, amen, as you looked around you, you can see that there is need, need for God among us. Amen. 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 There's a need for God. Let me tell you, I don't believe that this is all that God can do, do you? I don't believe that this is all that God has for us. Amen. As we looked around, is everything bright and green and growing and reproducing? Are souls finding God at our altars? Are sinners forsaking their sins and turning to God? Are lives being changed by the power of God? Who knows that there's a power of God that can change life? Yes. Amen. 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 Who knows that preaching doesn't change lives? No. Who knows that? Yes. It takes the power of God. Yes. It takes the power of God. Yes. It takes the power of God. And it's only the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. That touch and change yes. and transform. Yes. Amen. That life. Amen. 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 Oh God, as we looked around and these things are not happening, it may mean, it may mean we are really in a dry and a trusted land. Amen. A dry and a trusted land. Number two, resource. We need to see God as our own hope. What we need to do? See God, see God as our own hope. Notice the first words that David, that came out of the Sunday's mouth. He said, Oh God, you are my God. Oh God, you are my God. This will build hope in your heart. Two things stand out to me in this short statement. First, David acknowledges the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the presence of God. Can we say thank God for the presence of God? First, David acknowledges the presence of God. He knows, hallelujah, he knows God is there. You know sometimes God shows up among us and we know he's there. Amen? 
Amen, church? We need to know. You see, sometimes because we have our program to carry on, we don't even recognize that he is there. But David recognizes and acknowledges the presence of God. He knows God is there. And even in this dry and trusty land where he was, and it is said that David at this time was in this wilderness. He was running away from his son Absalom. And you can understand all that was going through his mind and through his heart. And even though he was in such a situation, he knew God is there, even in this spiritual wilderness. And that is something so good for us to understand. That even in our spiritual wilderness, God is there. You see, once you know him, and that's why David said, oh God, you are my God. Hallelujah. Is he your God this morning? When you know him, you can truly say, oh God, in your times of distress, in your times of anguish, you can call up to him. You can say, oh He said, Bitter, should I go from thy spirit? Hallelujah. Or whither should I flee from thy presence? Listen, you can't get away. Hear what he said. He said, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He said, If I take the wings of the morning and tread in the uttermost parts of the sea, even now.
Amen. Look back over your life. Look back over the, your life from the time you were born. And see how good you've been to yourself and how good you treated yourself. <laughs> messed up. Messed up. So, so messed up. Some people are so messed up that they're messed up.
You know, sometimes I think our situation is so hard and it's so difficult, but when Jesus comes, I say the tent of power is broken. Oh, God of mercy. The demons begin to speak. Yes, yes, yes. You see, when Jesus is on the scene, demons will have to speak. Yes. Amen. And they have to seek for refuge. Yes, yes. They request and say, send us into the slimes. The way out of the man in the Bible said he was seated and clothed in his right mind. Amen. Uh, Amen. Do anybody know that Jesus this morning? Amen. 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 Psalms 18 and 6 states, In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before him into his ears. Let me say this morning that it will take a deliberate, deliberate act of true repenting and turning back to God. Not just a quick, casual genuflect at the altar. This thing is going to call for true repentance, true confession of all sins. No, no, no genuflect. You know what people do when they genuflect? Eh? And you go. And you go. I can't even go down so low. And you go. But friends, it's going to take more than that. Yes. It's going to take more than that. Hallelujah. If you want God to work in your life, it's going to take more than that. It's going to take some true repenting yes. and turning back to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, it's a true, true, a true pursuit of God. It's our only hope. Amen. Let us look at resolution. We need to set our hearts to seek God. Amen. I don't know what you're seeking and who you're seeking this morning, but it's time for us as children of God to turn our hearts to seek the Lord. First, I want you to notice what he says about the importance of his pursuit. Part of what's sworn in the King James Version reads as follows Early I will seek you. Hear what David said? Early I will seek you. The idea here is not necessarily the hour of the day, although the early morning hour was a great time to seek the Lord. What I think this phrase means is that we need to make seeking the Lord a first priority in life. Not something that can be left to the waiting hours of the day, but as something that must be done as a first priority of our lives. A first priority of our lives is to seek the Lord. Yes. Oh, oh, sometimes we are so mixed up and so involved in our own affairs. Own affairs. We don't have time to see God. But yet we, we want God to work mighty among us. We want God to do a whole lot of things. But listen, if you want God to do it, we've got to seek God. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know how many people get up that don't even share prayer? You know how many Christian people don't pray? They don't, they don't pray at all. It's almost like when we were kids. Pastor Daniel and parents would ask you, did you say a prayer before you go to sleep? Nobody teaching you to pray. To tell you, did you say a prayer? But oh God, help us. God is about to do something, but he's got to see it. And all the change Jesus we can buy is not him. And that's the prayer we say. Gentle Jesus we can buy is not in charge. Whatever else, and that's him. <laughs> we go on to the bed and make a full report. Did you pray? Yes, we pray. We said our prayers. But my friends, in this time in which we are living, that is not going to help us. That's not going to help us in our pursuit of God. We need to seek God. We need as God's children to pray. Amen. And I said that we need to pray. I just don't mean coming to prayer meeting on Wednesday evenings. 
because some folks settle for that. Once you out uh, Wednesday evening, that's your prayer. God bless our overseer for that Wednesday evening because sometimes we wouldn't get nothing at all. Oh God. Oh God, help us. But we want to see God move among us, God. He's not going to move among us when we are in such a dry and, and a thirsty and a weary land. We need to know, my friends, that if we want God working among us, we've got to seek Him. Yeah. Amen. 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 We've got to seek Him. Hallelujah. We've got to seek God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second, I want you to notice what He said about the earnestness of His, of his pursuit. In, other, in several other translations, this must reads like this. He said, earnestly, I will seek you. Hear what David said, earnestly, I will seek you. Earnestly, I will seek you. He said, in my heart, I long for you. Do you feel that loving in your heart for God? He said, in my heart, I long for you. And then he said, my whole being desire you. I can't get enough of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think there's, there's a secular song, something that I heard, something on the radio, some, some song that said, I can't get enough of you. Anybody know that? No. Hmm? No. Oh, you all are so saying. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's a secular song. No, I, you. It I can't get enough no, of you. <laughs> you heard it? Amen. Since the other heard it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They won't sing it about Jesus. It's a lovely song. It's a lovely song, of course, if you're in love and, and you're singing that to your love, I can't get enough of you. Amen. But so the scripture says, that's the desire we should have. We should say, Lord, I can't, I long for you. I long for you. I long for you. I earnestly, I earnestly seek you. In my heart, I long for you. My whole being desire you. I can't get enough of you. Is that our desire this morning? Can we truly say in our hearts, Lord, I, I can't get enough of you. And sometimes we can't get enough of the worldly things. We can't get enough of the worldly pleasures. We can't get enough of worldly recognition. My friends, but it's time that we see God. It's time that we become hungry for God. Amen. That we truly say in our hearts and souls, Oh God, I can't get enough of you. David Hughes uses two illustrations he knows his listeners will understand and trying to demonstrate just how serious he's about going hard after God. He says first of all that it feels like someone died of us. Oh God. He was so thirsty. And was warned in the NLT it says my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this part and very land where there is no water. Have you ever been so thirsty you thought you were going to die unless you got something to drink. Have you ever been to that place? You see, David grew up in the desert region. He now, he, he knew how absolutely essential it was to have a dependable source of water. That is why he says, my whole body longs for you. Every cell in my body cries for, for refreshment. I can't live without you. That's the kind of relationship, can you say, that is the kind of relationship you have with your God this morning. That you, that's the way you feel about your God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Children, we need God. We need God. We need God. We need Him more than we ever needed Him. Amen. Amen. Why do you think the world is so desperate today and people are panicking and, and people are committing suicide and people are going into depression? You know why? Because they were not seeking God. They were not seeking God. They were seeking other things. And when things disappear from you, and if that is your God, you will have to go down with the things. But when you know God, you're going to be able to stand. You're going to be able to stand. Hallelujah. Oh God, let me ask you this question. Has going hard after God become as important to us as water is to someone dying of thirst? Maybe, 
Maybe, maybe you're not thirsty enough. Or you trust me enough for God this morning. The other illustration he uses is that his pursuit of God is like someone starving. Starving to death. Just as the human body cannot continue to function in strength and energy without taking in food to nourish it and replenish it. So David says he cannot function spiritually without feeding on bread from heaven. I don't know what you are feeding on this morning. But I want to encourage you this morning to feed on the bread of heaven. Yes. Hear what Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Have you ever come to that place in your pursuit of God where you can say, as Jesus said, to his disciples in John 4.24 My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. As a hunger for God and his prophet will be done in our lives become like the very bread we eat. Maybe as a people this morning we are not hungry enough yet.